Moving right along with the show and another new topic to discuss before that on Nathaniel Hackett and before I talk about the New York Jets situation, I want to bring up one last time on today's show. If you have any questions or comments you want to make, to please use the tip and donations link you see on your screen, gsmcpodcast.net. By using that link, I can see your question pop up right away. I can read it on air and that way get your guys' perspective on anything I say or on any of the topics on hand. It's a massive help for this show as well as all the other shows across the network. So again, if you would, please use the tip and donations link gsmcpodcast.net. With that, back to the New York Jets. A pretty successful offseason this year. Last year, it was, I, I guess it would be a success because they brought in Aaron Rodgers, but With that in mind, the season, the regular season, didn't pan out as they would have hoped. And now, this offseason, you have Aaron Rodgers recovering from his Achilles tear. And you have more pieces being brought in to support him. On top of that now, this topic of Nathaniel Hackett keeps being brought up. More recently, with SNY's Connor Hughes reporting on it and exploring this avenue of the New York Jets trying to replace him to give a little bit of context you know when Nathaniel Hackett first came in he was coming off of the bat of that very disastrous Denver um, period as the head coach nothing really positive came off of that you know you had those comments made by Sean Payton why while I don't really agree with how he said it on air um, I don't think he was too far off from the truth on how you know just poor it was from a head coaching level in the NFL and Coming off of that stint, you know, you would have thought that it would be a while before he got in any sort of job in the NFL. But right away, the New York Jets hired him as their offensive coordinator. And like many people would imagine, the whole narrative around that was that they're just trying to bring in Aaron Rodgers to get him to sign with the New York Jets. You have one of his favorite uh, offensive coordinators come in. It undoubtedly would also lure Aaron Rodgers in to be in a spot with a familiar face in there as the offensive coordinator. That was all being said about that, but now as the seasons have played out, there have been reports about Robert Sala trying to maybe explore a way to get these play-calling responsibilities away from Nathaniel Hackett. SNY's Connor Hughes said on the topic that the Jets made legitimate attempts this offseason to hire someone who would essentially replace Hackett, not as a new offensive coordinator, but a title above that who would run the show. Sources spoke of many, many times last summer where Hackett called a play, then Rodgers changed it completely at the line of scrimmage. They figured that he can do the same thing come the regular season with uh, somebody else running the show. That also follows the athletics reports from Diana Russini and Zach Rosenblatt from January where, again, similar sort of thing happened. Robert Sala thought about adding another offensive staff member to, again, essentially just replace Nathaniel Hackett and get him to have a lesser role calling plays in the offense. Once Aaron Rodgers went down, I think we all saw it how obviously the offense was going to look differently when you don't have Aaron Rodgers there, when you've been planning all offseason to have him as your starting quarterback, things are going to look drastically different. But it is interesting now thinking back to that Miko Hardman interview on the Pivot podcast where he went pretty in, pretty much all in on the New York Jets and his time there, calling it, um, you know, just uh, un- not unprofessional, but basically saying it was unprofessional, saying how the offense just really had no direction, no leadership once Aaron Rodgers went down. And people looked at him pretty crazy when he said that. You know, you had Sauce Gardner coming out and um, responding for the New York Jets. But now, with these recent reports about the team, Robert Sala trying to look for avenues to essentially get somebody else in there to call plays, you look back on that and you think, you know, maybe Miko Harmon wasn't far off. Maybe in one world he was right about how the New York Jets sort of handled the offense with Nathaniel Hackett and really overestimating how much Aaron Rodgers could help solve some of their deficiencies on offense. Um, Not to say that 
uh, once you know you have Zach Wilson come in, Tim Boyle come in, uh, Trevor Simeon come in as your starting quarterbacks, not a lot of offensive coordinators can make those guys look like all pros right away, but a lot of people would say that just having these guys out there, a good, a decent offensive coordinator could go in there and sort of change the game plan around these guys and try to maximize their skills, even though they know it's going to be worse than what they had in Aaron Rodgers, trying to change the play style, try to change the offense a little bit to sort of fit what they can do best. And I think that's really one of the biggest points to take from this is that there was just no shift in the offense. Once Aaron Rodgers went down, you know, it seemed like there was no backup plan. There was no idea, no fathom, no fathomable thought that Aaron Rodgers would ever get hurt and not be the quarterback. It seemed like they didn't plan for the worst case scenario where you don't want it to happen, but in case it does happen, you don't want to be left with your hands out wide and thinking, you know, what do we do now? People are going to look to the offensive coordinator to have a backup plan to see how they adjust. That never came from Nathaniel Hackett, and I think that's just the biggest point to take from this, that Nathaniel Hackett might not be in a spot or wasn't in a spot back then to sort of lead this team in a different avenue without Aaron Rodgers. You know, without Aaron Rodgers, how good of a offensive coordinator can Nathaniel Hackett be with a Zach Wilson or maybe a Tyra Taylor if he happens to play at all this year? How much will they look worse without Aaron Rodgers? Even though they upgraded a lot of spots on the offensive side of the ball where last year they didn't and that also played into their offense looking as bad as it did, if Aaron Rodgers isn't, isn't there, how different does this offense look with Nathaniel Hackett running the show? And also, thinking about this now, is he on the hot seat right now as an offensive coordinator? I think he probably should have been by the time he got here, or at least last offseason because of that just period with the Denver Broncos. I think already there was, there was or there should have been some doubt with him being the offensive coordinator right away after that time in Denver. As much as, you know, teams do it all the time, they bring in guys that um, are familiar with other free agent targets that they want to bring in. That's not really the issue. That's just a reality. It happens. But I think there does come a point where as much as you want to bring in that big name player to your team, bringing in this other guy, how much really validity is there in that and how much can that other guy help your team Nathaniel Hackett from all the information that's provided in here doesn't seem to provide as much based on the reports saying that he called the play and then Aaron Rodgers essentially just changed it completely at the line of scrimmage you know at, at that point you know what is he contributing um, to the offense to the game plan if Aaron Rodgers is just changing it to whatever play he feels is best um but also in that same breath, Aaron Rodgers stood up pretty adamantly against Sean Payton in defense of Nathaniel Hackett. So there is that human friendship relationship there between Aaron Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett. So how would he respond if the New York Jets halfway through the season got rid of him? He already is a little bit outspoken. I don't think um, that's breaking news to anybody. So how Aaron Rodgers sort of responds to that? Um, maybe them getting rid of his friend, a familiar face in the organization. How does he respond and how does that affect the team, the dynamic with Robert Sala? Is he then on the hot seat as well if they get rid of Nathaniel Hackett? There's a lot of sensitive points with this New York Jets team. It all seems great because they definitely upgraded. I was a fan of what they brought in, but there still remains those little pressure points with this team with Nathaniel Hackett. Aaron Rodgers' health, Tyron Smith's health, how that all plays in. They're really going all in on this season, so it just seems to me from the outside looking in that any sort of crack, any sort of uh, just wrong turn somewhere will affect the entire team, and there it just seems like they don't really have that big of a margin um, of error to make this season if they want to end up where they expect to end up come January and December but right now that's where it stands is Nathaniel Hackett on the hot seat I think he is I think he should have been already does he make it through the entirety of this season that will depend greatly on how the New York Jets perform but 
that is all on that topic. We're going to take a quick break right now, and we're going we're gonna to wrap up this show with one last topic. Kirk Cousins talking about the Atlanta Falcons drafting Michael Penix and how he responded to that um, action by his current team in the Atlanta Falcons. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 